Welcome back to another true crime reaction. Uh, today we got some body cam. Cops hunt down and kill mass shooter. Uh, yeah, this video should be absolutely fucking crazy. So, like always, let's not waste any time. Let's just get right into this one, man. <clears throat> I'm at BEH. I'm at UNLV. Someone's shooting inside the office. Hey. Holy shit, dude. This All right, this one's going to be insane, man. Metro, please. Dude, holy shit. This is nuts already. Only 10 days before Christmas break. The thunder of gunfire annihilates the holiday cheer at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. As an army of law enforcement descends on the campus, they must fight through chaos and confusion to save lives and put an end to this terrifying madness. As the seconds tick by in this high-pressure mission, the officers find that evil comes in many forms. I should be a kid if like, oh, he got mental issues. Get out! Yeah. It's December 6, 2023, Woo! and students at UNLV are enjoying a typical <coughs> day of university life, with perhaps nothing more urgent on their minds than the upcoming holiday break and the impending pressure of finals. If there's a dark cloud overhead, it doesn't seem that anyone at the school has noticed. Yeah, Nor does it appear that day. anyone notices when a black 2007 Lexus pulls slowly onto the property <coughs> and stakes out a parking space in front of B. All right, I just want to say, how the fuck would anybody notice that? No, did it, nor did anybody notice this random car pulling at this random time into this random parking lot. Like, bro, no one's going to be like, oh, that's suspicious, this car pulling up right now into this parking lot with a bunch of other cars. No one's thinking that, dude. No one's going to think that. And seven Lexus pulls slowly onto the property like, and hello? stakes out a parking space in front of Beam Hall the epicenter of UNLV's prestigious Lee Business School. The man who gets out of the car is wearing a long black overcoat, but there's little else to distinguish him from any other faculty member on campus. As he retrieves some things from his car, he could be anyone. Yeah, no literally. one pays any attention as he walks <coughs> the building. Literally, In front he could of be the anyone. student union, life goes on as normal. But this day is about to change. 911 emergency, Hopkins 2024. Do you need police, fire, or medical? I need the police, please. What's the address? Um, I'm at BEH. I'm at UNLV. Someone's shooting inside the office. Please hurry. Okay. Um, all right. Are you at UNLV? Yes. How long ago did you hear the shots? They're happening right now. How many shots have you heard? Like, like five. I'm hiding under my desk. I closed Shoot. my door. It's locked. From the time the initial 911 dude, calls go through, man. it's only a matter of moments. Dude, that's so horrifying, dude. Oh my god, that's horrifying. Before police on campus respond to the scene. Indeed, the first sign of trouble from the plaza next door comes when a single university police officer runs in the direction of Beam Hall. I heard some screaming. Who did you hear screaming? I don't know. I think they were on the right of me. I'm on the fourth floor. Did you hear them say anything? No, just screaming. I heard the shots for and then I heard screaming. Okay. Do you know if anybody's injured? Yo, that guy is moving. No, I'm in my office. I closed the door. <coughs> okay. Uh, what are you hearing? There is an alarm. That was an alarm. Okay. Okay. Who else is in the office with you? Okay. Dude, holy fuck. This is horrifying. The woman's sentiment will be shared by everyone in Beam Hall as news of the shooter spreads. But even at a moment when many in the building would like to escape, others are bravely rushing to the scene. Beam Hall! Second floor! Dude, the alarm, bro, is like... Fuck, I... I don't like the alarm, man, honestly. Like, I, I obviously I get it because, like, burn, get the fuck out, right? Everyone's like, all right, alarm means leave, right? Get the fuck out. Um, 
but I feel like a lot of people are probably mistaking the alarm for a fire alarm. Um, and also, I don't like how loud it is because now it's going to like, it's going to be harder for the cops to locate the person. It's going to be, you know what I'm saying? At least I, I would assume so. The university police officer is the first one in the building, nice. arriving only 78 seconds after the first 911 call. Damn. Those Let's, reports are just still over a pouring minute. in, tasking dispatchers to gather vital details from traumatized and terrified callers. It was on the fourth floor at the Lee School of Business at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I heard shots fired and I heard screaming afterwards. With calls reporting the shooter on multiple floors, the first police on the scene must be on high alert, yeah, you knowing that the him. gunman could be literally anywhere. Dude, that alarm. Close. I got open door. Open door. Does that? Oh, I was about to say, did that alarm auto lock every door? The building is filled with students and faculty members, which will only make it that much harder yeah, to identify literally. the shooter at a glance. But even as the first responding officers move carefully through the hallways, a massive police response is mobilizing. Yes, yeah, send everyone. Send everyone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Send them all. Go get this motherfucker, bro. Go get this fucking POS. Officers from both the University Police Department GSW and the Las Vegas Metropolitan horrifying, Police man. Department are rushing to the you know, if you don't know what GSW means, gunshot wound. Campus, knowing that mere seconds could make the difference between life and death for so many innocent people. As the first cop car rolls up to Beam Hall, panicked students continue to pour out of the building. Moments later, even more police descend onto the intense scene. Damn. If the shooter yeah, is still send in the everyone, building, bro. He will soon be massively outgunned. Nobody's transmitting. It's gonna be this one upstairs. Just ask for As more officers enter the building, those arriving on scene warn that their emergency response could make things worse if they aren't careful. 0750, we do have a lot of students running everywhere just for these units arriving. Watch your speed. But it's clear that time is of the essence, not only in terms of stopping the violence, yeah. but also when it comes to rescuing victims. Yes. Two police officers are approached by a man with a gunshot wound to the chest. What? Amazingly, he's on his feet, but the need for emergency medical care is Dude. unmistakable. What the fuck, bro? Motherfucker got hit and he's just walking around. Dude, that guy's a fucking G. The scene is not secured by EMTs, however, so the police do what they have to do to get the victim to an ambulance as quickly as possible. Where's the victim? In the back right now. Keep going, keep going. You can't drive like that with that open. Just take him out to Maryland. But the injured man is only one of thousands of people on campus this morning. Yeah, And literally. police know that finding and neutralizing the shooter Holy is their top fuck, priority. Put your hands up! Please, show me your hands! Clear. Show me your hands! Show me your hands! You guys see the shooter? No? All right. Holy fuck, dude. Asking the kids if they've seen the shooter is crazy, bro. That's insane, man. This, this whole situation is crazy Please, as fuck. Please, everybody in here, show yourself! Clear! The fluid and immediate nature of the situation has arriving cops unsure about what to do or where to go putting them at a disadvantage when it comes to stopping, or for that matter, even identifying the shooter. We're not standing by. Where is the shooter? I don't know yet. Okay. Where was the person shot? I don't know that yet either. I just got here. 
what? How did they didn't ask a person? Why didn't they ask the person who? Uh, he. I mean, they're probably like, oh my fucking god, you should, you should fucking shot. But like, you probably should get that information of, hey, where did he shoot you at, bro? Let's go. Seven fifteen. Yeah, we're gonna need some additional units here. It's Beam Baker Easy out of Mary Hall. We need you with us. I'm to your right. Get out. Get out. Third floor. How'd you get up there? There will be time later to process the events of this chaotic day and yeah. any mistakes that might be made in the heat of the moment. For now, police must do the best they can with the limited information they have. True. And frightened parents must do the same. 911 emergency, Newhauser, 1486. Yes, hi. Um, I'm calling because I received a text from my daughter from UNLV. Okay. Um, she's, are you aware of what's going on? Yeah, we are aware. Okay. Um, is there any information you can give me? I cannot give you any information at this time. Yo, I understand the parent calling. Like, obviously you're concerned, but like, bro, you're just blocking up the lines, man. We are just okay. We, we do have we do have units on on scene, and they are working it. Okay. Okay. Is she where uh, is she I, at? Um. Well, I. Um. Let me ask her. Do you? Know? Yep. Ooh, tell, okay. me where, tell me where she's at. She, she's at UNLV. Okay. Um, let me see if she'll text me back. I'm sorry. I'm shaking. No, it's fine. It's fine. I understand. Whew. Yeah, that mom's literally going through some shit, bro. Imagine getting a text from your child. Like, obviously, I'm not a parent, so I can't, I really have no idea what that's like. But, like, a text from your child being like, yo, there's an active shooter right now. Like, and I'm here. Like, that's, f that's fucking horrifying. What do you got? Officers inside Beam Hall are getting their first look at the devastation the shooter has caused, and it isn't long before news of the fatality spreads to the still arriving units. What the fuck? I don't like that reaction from that office officer at all. Oh shit, this is it. I don't really like that. Yeah, this is what I signed up for. This motherfucker is a sh dude. I wonder if this guy was ex-military, bro. This is what I signed up for. This motherfucker is holy shit. He's built different. This is what I signed up for. Active shooter team, make our way to the suspect and take him out. Hey. Dude, holy fuck. Turn off the fucking alarm. Both inside the building and out. Yeah, and real shit. Must dude. make their way to get students and staff to safety. They gotta turn off this the fucking officers alarm. know they alarm, cannot go dude. fully into rescue mode because their deadly adversary could emerge from around any corner at any time. Dude, this is insane, man. Metro police! Hold on, we got a barricade here. But many of the doors in Beam Hall are already locked, which isn't always a good thing. Police discover a blood trail leading into just such a room. 
talking. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yo, that's a fucking sturdy door, bro. Even with a veritable army of police officers using their might, the door proves too sturdy. Yeah, it's a massive One cop door, goes dude. in search of some assistance, only to demonstrate how thick the tension is here in the opening minutes of this horrific event. Yeah, you gotta remember, we're still in the first probably like, what, first five minutes? Hey, 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 don't wait, watch where you Yo, hey, give me a minute. Hey. Come in here. I need a breaching tool. Stop. Hold on a second. What do you want me to do? We I'm getting breaching tool. We need you with keys here, or give me I don't keys. have keys. Who has keys? The three star over there, right over there. She's got keys. Jesus With so Christ. much about this appalling scene outside their control, yeah, dude, this is one officer nuts. decides to at least do something about the maddening soundtrack. Yeah. Meanwhile, police hit upon a way to yeah, breach. You didn't even fix it, bro. You made it worse. You made it into a worse sound. Meanwhile, police hit upon a way to breach that unyielding door, even without specialty tools. Can we break through the wall? Yeah. Hey, see if you can kick the wall next to the doorknob. Go six inches off the edge of the door and kick through the wall. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. Clear it. Clear it. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Go that wall on that side. Go on that side. Dude, this is nuts, man. Holy fuck, this is nuts, dude. The room turns out to be empty, just like the other. Bro, what? Oh my god, bro. They just spent, took eight motherfuckers spending. Holy shit. This is, dude, this situation is insane. Holy fuck. It shows the pure chaos of everything that's happening, bro. Just pure fucking chaos. The room turns out to be empty. Just like the other many unknowns police must handle in this crisis. Indeed, even the unlocked rooms in Beam Hall are a nightmare of shadows, confusion, and hidden figures. Police, anybody in here? Jesus, bro. Police, anybody in here? Things are locked. While the multiple responding agencies are doing their best to coordinate a unified response, the mere presence of this many cops with this much firepower means that even the slightest mistake could prove costly. Bruh, holy fuck. Slightest mistake could prove costly. With the FBI, the Las Vegas okay. Metropolitan Police, and the University Police all working in the same building, the threat of friendly fire is considerable. Yeah, the fuck? Blue, blue, blue! Okay, hold on. Wait up. Watch for them. Look face up so you can see you're a cop, please. Okay. <laughs> oh, seriously. Okay. 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 Blue, 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 blue! 
However, the difficulties Dude, of a multi-department response are only one aspect of the confusion in the air on this December day. Bro, they still haven't even found the fucking shooter, bro! Oh my... Like, what, dude, what is happening? Charlie 712, go to Student Union, last report, second floor. Police respond to the building right next to Beam Hall, the Student Union, a new environment that will test their nerves as they investigate these shocking reports. I got right. Holy fuck. But the police on campus can't afford to focus solely on the innocent. Yeah, you gotta the find... this grisly mayhem must be stopped. Yeah, like, you... In my opinion, that's the most important part, is finding... Because once you neutralize this guy, now you can go into full, like, recovery and get everyone out and deal with all the injured and everything. You gotta fucking eliminate this threat first, though, bro. Unfortunately, news of the shooter's location and description is constantly evolving. Seven inches. Um, heavy set, male, yeah, heavy. white, black, Hispanic. He looks white to me. Subjects on top of MPE, long hair and backpacks. Two subjects on top of the roof of MPE with long hair and backpacks. Did you hear that? Yeah. MDE, is that behind us here? Behind me? That's uh, down there. Second suspect is at 4970 here, and I see the best ones are great. Dude, Jesus Christ, this is a fucking disaster. There are plenty of experienced officers on campus, however, and not all of them are convinced by the startling chatter coming from the radio. Yeah, so I, I heard on the radio they said that they had two subjects coming to DRI saying that they were robbed by like something like that by the suspect. But that's down there, Flamingo and and Palo Verde. That's where we were at. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, while every incoming report must be treated as plausible, some of the cops on scene know the reality of the situation better than others. Relax. Two of them are five We have one suspect down right in front of Frank and Estella. I think at one point on the air, they came across it that this building had activity, but I'm not... That's going to be one of those echo calls. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, just like on October 1. So I think that's yeah, shooting in Mandalay. It is inevitable that many of the police working at the UNLV campus will be reminded of the worst mass shooting in modern America. Yeah, dude, that one, if you want me to react to that one too, just let me know in the comments, man. That, that shit was fucking crazy at Mandalay Bay. Holy fuck, that one is insane. The guy just bringing in... Oh, shit, I almost destroyed my... Let's just drop my microphone in the mouth. The guy just bringing in suitcases after suitcases after suitcases full of fucking guns and ammo and shit. American history. The 2017 massacre that was launched from the Mandalay Bay Hotel, yeah. only three miles away. On the other hand, some officers are experiencing something entirely new. Sorry, this is day one for me. It's like a dog, so welcome. That university police officer isn't the only one facing unique trials on this dark day. Day one is crazy. Officer Cody Schmidt, who was the first one into the building, has had to strike a balance between duty and family. My wife is in here. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Text. If you haven't left campus, you need to do it right now. But even these pressing concerns aren't enough to keep him out of the fight. Hey, I got a sledge! I got a sledge! Oh! Yeah, get the fuck in there. Yeah, get in there, bro. Yeah. I was the first one in there when the yeah. shots were going out. Good? Okay. I just need to find out what my wife was. I just need to lunch with her. 
I'm cut. Officer Schmidt isn't the only one to get injured that day. Oh, he definitely just tore his ACL, right? He fucked up his knee. There's no way he didn't fuck up his knee. You separated your shoulder? As the officers reconvene, they know there have been victims, and some are beyond help. How many was it? Did they see four? Four people down, yeah. But two of, two of them were definitely fatal. There's just snow. No As some of the officers finally manage to turn off the alarm, there's still much work to be done. Dude, they're all going, woo, yeah. Dude, the... The shooter's still active, and you guys are cheering, bro. What the fuck am I watching right now? Finally managed to turn off the alarm. There's still much work to be done. That sucks in the middle of the class. Like a PowerPoint, you have like the... Bro, the shooter's still active. Why are they... Why are they fucking... There's a lot of fucking cowards locked in? What is he saying, bro? Dude, they're so, like, calm when the shooter's still alive. There's a lot. Cowards. Cowards. You I could be a fucking kid and be like, oh, he got mental issues. Fucking bitches. Fuckers. So, it looks like... But it wasn't a student on the other end of the barrel this time. It was a Anthony professor. As a description of the suspect goes out over the air, perhaps a few officers are recalling an encounter they had only moments after entering the building. Get out! The officer's failure to identify the shooter may be regrettable. Are you fucking kidding me, bro? There's no way. Less than a minute later, the unemployed professor confronted university police outside the front doors of Beam Hall and opened fire on one of them. It turned out to be the last thing he ever did. Bro, he did fucking what? Them. It turned out to be the last of Beam Hall and unemployed professor confronted university police outside the front doors of Beam Hall and opened fire on one of them. It turned out to be the last thing he ever did. The killing of the suspect was mercifully clean, but with bullets whizzing through the air, it's a small miracle that it went as well as it did. We'll this guy just randomly just picked uh, the, uh, the, the, the shooter left more than carnage in his wake. He also left clues to his intentions. This fucking Police guy. find two cards at the scene. Each of them filled. Wait, 449. Dean, Vice Dean, Astro Dean, and Chair, Art Chair. Filled front and back with photos, names, staff titles, and room numbers. Dude, that's fucking insane, bro. Holy shit, he had a hit list. The names of 10 UNLV faculty members are found written on the cards, although none of them were among Polito's actual victims. Jesus Police also Christ. learned that Polito's campaign of terror did not begin at the university that morning. Prior to entering Beam Hall with a handgun, Polito mailed 22 letters filled with hateful sentiments to academics he perceived to have wronged him in some way throughout his career. In one, Polito wrote to one of his former co-workers at East Carolina University, You just a lazy, no-talent, no-brain, think-you-entitled scold. The professor, a Mensa member who referred to himself as Dr. 160IQ in the letters, also included a... Dr. 160IQ? You sound like a fucking idiot, buddy. ...referred to himself as Dr. 160IQ in the letter. Sorry, but if you call yourself Dr. 160I2, your IQ is probably not even half that. ...also included a mysterious white powder in the envelopes, a substance that police later determined was harmless. 
Do you know? Do you what know was it? Was uh, he was the guy in the front with his, his brains popping up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the destruction yeah, caused by law bro. enforcement may be extensive, but it's trivial compared to the damage done by the killer. Yeah. Anthony Polito's attack claimed the lives of. You just repair. You just replace the the building, like the windows and everything. Like. You do whatever you can, bro. Fuck the building. Who gives a fuck about the building? Destroy everything in the building, for all I give a fuck. Dude, just ki find and kill that motherfucker. Three people. Che John Jerry Chang, yeah, 64. That's sad. Nayoko Takamaru, 69. And Patricia Navarro Velez, 39. All three victims were UNLV professors. He went after Polito professors. left one That's gunshot crazy. victim alive but severely injured. The guy who shot a 38 year old visiting professor whose life was likely saved by the quick thinking of police officers Jacob Noriega and Ty Vesperas. Both men were awarded by the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Foundation for their extraordinary composure and bravery. Law enforcement analysts would later assess Polito as suffering from delusions of grandeur. Along Delusions of grandeur? What the fuck does that mean? Violence was likely motivated by grievances with the university's administration and turned even yeah, obviously. Side an inferiority complex. This conclusion. I mean, obviously, that's why he was going out of there and fucking attacking the the professors. Was arrived at in part due to Polito's personal website, which was filled with positive reviews of his classes from students, his own work supposedly deciphering a letter from the Zodiac Killer and links to subjects he found fascinating, including the 2001 anthrax letters. I don't know what that Polito is. Polito was solely responsible for the rampage that day. Many of the confusing calls reporting multiple suspects proved to be untrue or unrelated. Yeah. Authorities said that Polito was financially struggling in the days leading up to the shooting. They found a document similar to a last will and testament at his house in Henderson. They also found an eviction notice taped to his front door. Polito had recently Damn, he was being fucking evicted too. Had lost his adjunct professorship at Roseman University of Health Sciences in nearby Henderson, Nevada. Authorities confirmed that he applied to many institutions of higher education throughout the state and was met with only rejections, including four from UNLV. Damn, as son, they as... didn't want his ass there. I mean, rightfully so. He turned out to be a fucking just complete psychopathic fucking murderer Polito's actions were on December 6th he may have had even more terrifying ambitions the intense law enforcement response may have saved more lives than we will ever know yeah real shit although they were in fucking shambles looking for the guy they were in absolute shambles looking for that motherfucker bro holy fuck dude that was nuts god damn bro holy shit yo hey if you're not subscribed to uh EWU body cam make sure to go do that man God damn, dude, what a good video. That one was fucking crazy, though. Holy shit.